The Central Texas landscape is beautiful, but it can also be the source of some discomfort. Many parts of the region are still recovering from a historic amount of cedar earlier this month. You might be too. So joining me now to discuss why this particular pollen affects so many of us is Dr. Scott Oberhoff. He's an allergist at St. David's North Austin Medical Center. Thanks so much for being here this morning. Thank you. Good morning. This is a topic I think we're all very interested in. At the beginning of the year, we experienced the second highest amount of uh, cedar ever recorded in the city of Austin. I think a lot of us felt it. Is it still affecting some people? So fortunately, a lot of the rain that we've been hearing about and experiencing for the last week has really helped to lower those cedar counts and knock a lot of that pollen out of the air to, mm -hmm. to really give people a chance to see some improvement from those really, really high counts that, that you were talking about. Yeah, thank goodness for the rain. And I know, you know, some people this year who I talked to said they were feeling really sick, but they had never had cedar allergies before. I think there was some confusion over whether they were sick or had the allergies. What are the symptoms that people would see of cedar fever? So this time of the year can be very confusing yeah. with the cedar, with yeah. colds and flus and things that go mm -hmm. on. With cedar, with all allergy, typically what we see is very itchy symptoms, yeah. itchy eyes, itchy nose, itchy, sneezy, runny nasal symptoms. Mm -hmm. If you have fever, if you have uh, aches, chills, those sorts of symptoms, those are most often associated with illness and viral kind of infections. Mm -hmm. So even though it's called cedar fever, oftentimes uh, fever is not a part of that allergy. It's part of whenever you're actually ill. So That was my next question. Just to name uh, more of a, a myth that you would develop the fever with cedar fever. Absolutely. So fever usually indicates something a little bit more serious. So going to see your physician to help mm -hmm. distinguish that can be very, very helpful. Okay. And for those of us who do suffer <laughs> with cedar fever, what would you say the best treatment options are? So for treatment for most allergy, what we look to do is really three things. Number one, we want to try to avoid it. So for things like cedar, trying to avoid high cedar days when it's cold and windy and dry outside trying to avoid the morning hours. Mm -hmm. That often is a time where cedar tends to be more elevated. Number two, using medications. And there's various medications that can be helpful. If you're starting to see improvement in your symptoms with all the rain that we've been having, don't stop. The cedar still is going to be coming, mm -hmm. and so you want to continue that till the end of the season. Okay. And then finally would be things like immunotherapy, which is a long-term treatment. Mm -hmm. And you can talk to your allergist about that for, for getting those results. Great. And you mentioned the end of the season. When does it usually end? So typically we look to see the cedar start to really kind of go down uh, by February. But in some really severe seasons, it will last all the way into March. Yeah. Ooh, so we just got to hold out. Hopefully we'll keep getting that rain, washing yes, it out. Thank you so much, Dr. Oberhoff. We you. appreciate you being here. And here at KXA, and we're committed to helping you learn about your health along with our partner, the American Heart Association. So for resources and easy tips to live healthier, just head to kxan.com and click on Simple Health.